Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 26, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In diaries, we got a couple of quick ones over the weekend. Xavier talked about a malicious PowerPoint file that distinguishes itself with a very compact and simple visual basic macro. It's sort of one of those classic living off the land attacks. It uses the built-in Microsoft tool MSHTA.exe to download and then execute the actual malware. And Guy took a quick look at what passwords people sent uh, via basic authentications uh, to honeypots. And uh, well, no big surprises here. Now, if you're looking at the list, there's one that ranks really high. That's sort of part of his top five that does look like a random UUID. Well, uh, while the string is sort of random, it's not random in the sense that a fairly popular set of uh, video recorders apparently uses this as a hard-coded password. So at least they didn't use admin and instead used a random password, but the same random password for millions of devices. And on Friday, Click Studios, the company behind password manager Password State, announced that they apparently were breached and customers were provided with a compromised update. Now, there's not a lot of solid information here. The CSIS group has a write-up about this with some details, but they weren't able to retrieve all stages of the malware. Looks like it was shut down relatively quickly, but it's fair to assume that the malware did attempt uh, to exfiltrate passwords. And of course, that's sort of the worst case scenario when it comes uh, to password managers, that the password manager itself gets compromised. Password State itself appears to be less of a mass market product, but really more sort of marketed towards large enterprises. So that's why you may not have heard of that particular product. If you are using this product, then please assume that all passwords that you have stored in password state have been exfiltrated or compromised. And take a look at the miscellaneous write-ups to see if your version was affected by this malicious update. And if you're a Mac user, you may be familiar with Homebrew. Homebrew and Mac ports are uh, two popular ways how you install a common open source software on a Mac. With Homebrew, apparently it was possible for someone to submit a malicious pull request that would then be approved automatically. And as a result, the changes made and get picked up by users of Homebrew. The problem here was that sometimes developers really just want to update the version number of a particular package. And these requests were approved automatically. Now, the problem here was that the check to make sure that nothing else got updated but the version number didn't work correctly. And that would allow an attacker to then submit a request that looks like a version number update, but also sends malicious code that would then get approved automatically. Also, nice handling and interaction here between uh, the home pro project and the researcher disclosing uh, this vulnerability. After the researcher did uh, recognize that there may be a vulnerability, the project actually gave them permission uh, to submit a pull request with additional information, just nothing uh, malicious, and to demonstrate the vulnerability and allow them to address the problem. And researchers at the Technical University Darmstadt uh, did uh, find an interesting issue with Apple's AirDrop protocol. Now, a lot has been written over it these last couple of days, so I figure I'll cover it here. The problem essentially is that if you do allow others to upload files uh, to your phone, that they may receive a hash of your phone number. Now, hashing is usually a sound cryptographic choice uh, to obfuscate and obscure data. Uh, but in this particular case, well, phone numbers, you have a fairly limited uh, space of phone numbers. 
So brute forcing is certainly a possibility here. The real problem is that you should absolutely never just open up uh, AirDrop to the world. Try to turn it off and only enable it as you need it, or maybe only allow your contacts, which already have your contact information, uh, to connect uh, to your phone to offer you files for upload. If you just uh, allow upload to the world, then they can still not automatically upload files to you, but it can actually get quite annoying in some cases where people are just trying to push various images to your phone and you have to reject all of these requests. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.